So my wife and I found this oak hardwood solid core door at a thrift store for like 30 bucks and I couldn't pass up that deal. What I'd like to do is convert it into a headboard for one of our guest bedrooms. Now the issue is that the guest bed is a queen so that's only like 65-ish inches across and this door is 80. So that would be a pretty big overhang. What I'd like to do is trim it up and then keep it symmetrical. So right now it has a wider piece here at the base of the door and then a much narrower piece up at the top. So I want to get those to be the same. And the tricky part is probably going to be maintaining the dados for the inset panels. So that's going to be my challenge to overcome today. So the first thing I need to do was to lift up this door and put it down on my assembly table. And then I clamped down a 2x4 to use as a fence while I cut off the bottom part of the door with my circular saw. And I cut this right at the seam of where the inner panels met the bottom. Once I had that out, I could uh, measure off, what was it, like 56 inches and then I could make another cut and cut off the segment of the door that we're not going to use anymore. So this is all going to be scrap. As I'm making this cut, you can see it kind of sagging, and it was right about this time that I realized something. Oh, look at that. Wasn't glued in. So with them not glued in, I could squeeze a clamp onto the bottom and yank out both of those panels. And they both came out fairly easy, and actually the center board too came out. So with that out, I can then pry out the material that was stuck into the dado on the bottom part of the door so that I can reuse that dado and I won't have to cut a new one. I thought this was going to make the project way easier. So I measured the depth of the tenon, and I'm going to draw this out on the center board so that I know the depth of cut that I need to make to carve a new tenon for the dado that we salvaged. So here I am changing the depth of cut on my miter saw and I'm just making a few passes. You can see I have a stop block up there that um, is set at exactly quarter inch. That was the depth of, of the, the tenon. So here I am trimming down the remaining pieces of the door that exact same quarter inch. And I don't need to carve a tenon in this one because it's just going to meet up as a butt joint. So that was one side and here is the other. Next, I changed the depth of cut on my table saw and I need to clean up the edge on the bottom, taking off as little as possible because I don't want to jeopardize the depth of the dado that's already carved in there. So here I am measuring the top part of the door and I take that measurement, set my table saw fence up to cut off that exact same width off of the bottom piece of the door that we originally cut off. So I hope this is all making sense so far. So now it's time to put it all together. So here I am laying it back down on my assembly table, trying to slide in all of the pieces that we've had to cut so far. The panels went in really nicely, and the center beam as well. I had a little bit of trouble just because my shop's not big enough being able to get 
uh, it angled right, so I had to twist it on the table and I was able to move some equipment out of the way and get it slid in that way. But with a little bit of muscle and elbow grease, everything managed to fit. So now it's time to put the bottom piece on. Smeared a little glue on, lined it up with the tenons that were uh, protruding out from the panels and the center piece, and it just popped right on. Had to give it a little bit of persuasion with a rubber mallet, but then it was time for pipe clamps. Now I don't have pipe clamps that are that long, so I put my long ones on the far side of the door and then used some shorter ones and clamped onto the clamp itself. And this seemed to work. I was really able to get it very tight. So there was a little tiny bit of a gap here on the center board, so we just smeared in a little bit of wood filler. And here I am freehanding with the Craig pocket hole jig uh, just so that I can you know, put in a couple screws in each side and I did it once in the center as well just for added, um, added support. I, I'm not sure if it was needed or not but um, I figured why not. So sanding off the wood filler I left a nice a little seam that won't even be noticeable once we get uh, the stain color on there. Everything is dry at this point, taking off the clamps, peeling off the stickers that were there, and now I need to cut off the routed inserts for the hinges. And so I figured I'd just set up a fence with my circular saw and do that. What you can see here that that did not work so well at all. So I pulled out my table saw and set my fence appropriately to try to do it on the table saw. But you can see that even here it didn't work all that well either. So what I had to do was clamp it into my vise and then I just used a hand plane. And this worked really really well. Uh, left a wonderful edge and you can actually just see that little routed insert disappear. Take a look. Yeah, so that was perfect. So now it's time to iron on some edge banding. And this was the first time I've ever used edge banding. And um, I was pleasantly surprised. It worked really, really well. Very easy to apply and to cut and to trim. So I press it on with a block like they suggest and use a utility knife to trim off the ends. And then I, I bought a little edge trimmer too. And that worked really, really well. So at this point, it is time for stain. Uh, I used about five coats or so of this stain to get it as dark as I wanted to get it. And you can see here, this is the final color, wiping off any residual stain that's there. Then it was time to seal it with some polyurethane. So I used that water-based spray uh, gloss polyurethane. And in between coats, I would sand to like 220. And then I used an air hose to blow off any residual dust that was there and went right back at it with another coat. Ended up putting on about three coats of poly. Here I am making the cleats for the back. I'm gonna hang this using French cleat. So I take two pieces of hard oak and cut them at 45. So my plan was to use two cleats on the headboard, so once I had both of them cut out, I could drill three holes in each one, and then also each of those holes needed to be countersunk. So I used a countersink bit in the drill press, and I did that for all the holes. Now it's time to find the studs. So to do that, I use a little electronic stud finder, and it actually worked really, really well. And then I make my measurements and, and mark them on the wall with painter's tape. Then I measure from there over to the studs. And then I transfer those measurements onto the back of the headboard so I know where to place my cleats. Because I want the studs to basically fall in the center of where the cleat is so that the weight is properly distributed. So with a little bit of glue and some screws, we get that um, set down there and buttoned up. and I do this for both sides. Here is a little spacer block. Since it's going to be set apart from the wall by the width of the cleat, 
you need to account for that distance at the bottom so it doesn't swing back and forth. Now here I'm hanging the cleat itself. So what I do is I put the center one in, make sure it's level, mark the two sides, and then take it off. Now I can drill out the larger hole for the wall anchors and know that they're perfectly level and perfectly spaced. So at this point I can put the cleat back up on the wall, tighten down the center one, and then I can screw in both of the wall anchors once I double check and make sure everything is, is level. And I did this on both sides too and it worked really, really well. Now it's time to lug this thing from the shop over to the guest room. And lift it up onto the cleats. And it fit and hung perfectly the first time. I was very, very happy. So I nudged it over to line up with my measurements. And there it is, the final product. Whew. All right, done. Man, I thought that was going to be an easy project. You know, just one of those zip, cut, stain, stick it on the wall kind of projects. But there was a lot more to it than that, wasn't there? But hey, it sure turned out really nice. Tell me down in the comments what you guys think, and be sure to like the video. If you're brand new here, uh, click that subscribe button, and we will see you here next time. All right, take it easy. Bye-bye. Well, <laughs> this isn't going to work. My clamp is in the way. Could you get any dumber? Whew, done. All the words just escaped my brain. It's like my brain just turned off. Jeez. It's still hot. Why am I touching it? <laughs> what's, what's wrong with me? You're almost out of battery. Don't run out of battery. Don't do Well, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. See ya.